All right, geometry. We're gonna start day 12. Yay, day 12. Um, on your AMI for day 12, you're dealing with triangles. And the first one, uh, first part of that says you have to state whether it's an acute, obtuse, or right triangle. If we're thinking back to right triangles, we always think of Pythagorean theorem. Okay, I'm gonna assume most of you don't immediately think of Sokotoa. <laughs> So if we think about the Pythagorean theorem, this a squared plus b squared equals c squared, um, a and b are the legs of your triangle, c is always your hypotenuse, and it's always your longest side, right? Okay, so we don't have a block here that tells us that this is a right triangle, there's no little markings or anything, so we're going to plug these numbers into the Pythagorean theorem and check and see how those numbers work out, okay? Um, first of all, we need to figure out which one is our longest side. Um, 16 feet, that's my longest side. Two square root of 39 um, comes out to be about 12 and a half. So it's not longer than this one. So I know this is my longest side. Don't ever trust your diagram. Um, trust the numbers, trust your math. It's not gonna ever lead you wrong. So in this one, 16 feet is my longest side. So I'm gonna plug these numbers into that Pythagorean theorem. So 10 squared plus 2 square root of 39 squared equals 16 squared. And I'm just going to work this equation. 10 squared is 100. Now whenever I'm squaring this 2 square root of 39, you can just plug that in your calculator. Do parentheses 2 square root of 39 parentheses squared. And that'll give you your number. You can also look at it as I'm squaring both of these numbers. So 2 squared is 4. If I square root 39, or uh, square the square root of 39, that's just 39. Either way, you're going to get 156. And 16 squared is 256. You can check my math. Won't bother me a bit. 100 plus 156 gives me 256 and equals 256. Okay, if your numbers come out the same on both sides of your equal sign, that's obviously a true statement. 256 is in fact equal to 256. If that happens, then you're good. This is a right triangle. Right triangle, math checks out. Um, I'm going to show you here in just a moment what happens if that math doesn't check out and whether they are acute or obtuse. Okay, so I've got two other triangles here. Um, I don't know, you know, if they're acute, obtuse, right. I'm still checking for that. Um, I'm still using Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to look at this, this uh, top triangle. Let me tell you what the square root of 115 is. It's 10.7. Okay, so the square root of 115 is about 10.7, which is still less than 11. So I know 11 is my longest side. It's my C. It's my longest side. So I'm going to plug this into my Pythagorean theorem. So 9 squared plus square root of 115 squared equals 11 squared. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and solve this equation. 9 squared is 81. The square root of 115 squared. Now square roots and squareds cancel each other out. If you think about where we take the square root of a number, it cancels out any sort of square. So <clears throat> if you were to type this in your calculator, the square root of 115 squared is just going to tell you it's 115 because that square root sign and that squared cancel each other out. So that's 115. 11 squared is 1. 21. Okay, so if I add 81 and 115, I get 196 equals 121. Okay, I know that 196 is not equal to 121. No way. But what I need to look at is which side of this equal sign is the greater number. Okay, so my Longest side, my 11 right here, and my hypotenuse, if it were a right triangle, my C is less than the left-hand side of this equation. So whenever that happens, when this number on the right is less than this number on the left, I have an acute triangle. 
And that kind of makes sense too. If you think about this triangle, if it were right, it would have a certain length hypotenuse. But if that length is shortened for the hypotenuse or for that longest side, it's going to make a smaller angle, right? So that makes an acute triangle. Let's look down here at this other triangle. Um, my longest side is this 52.1. So I'm going to plug these others into that equation. Okay. Um, if I square these uh, and add them together, so 32.5 squared is 1056. 0.25, 39 squared is 1521, and 52.1 squared is 27, 14.41. Oh, I ran out of room. Anyway, mm, excuse me. And if I go ahead and add this left side, I get 2,577. 0.25 and I want to know is that equal to 2714.41 okay those are not equal but you can see on this one my right hand side is greater than my left hand side okay so this right triangle if it's right right there my hypotenuse is a certain length and I make it bigger it's going to open my triangle up to where that angle is greater. So if this side on the right side ends up being bigger than the left hand side, then it's obtuse. It's an obtuse triangle. Okay, and lastly we have um, a triangle, or you have a couple triangles where you have to find missing sides. And you're also told to leave the answers in simplest radical form. That means we're simplifying whatever radicals that we might have. Now put your perfect squares over here on the left hand side. If you remember that chart I had up in my room, this might look a little familiar. I just don't have the what times what equals this. My perfect squares are one times one is one, two times two is four, three times three is nine, four times four is 16, five times five is 25, all the way through 100. So we're gonna use that whenever we simplify our radicals. Um, I am told this is a right triangle. I know I'm using Pythagorean theorem. My hypotenuse is always directly across from that right angle. It's my longest side. So I'm going to sub these numbers into that equation. So x squared plus the square root of 17 squared equals 15 squared. Okay, simplify this out. The square root of 17 squared is just 17, and 15 squared is 225. Kind of doubting my math right now. Oh yeah, yeah, 225. All right, so I'm gonna finish solving this out. I need to get that x squared by itself, so I'm gonna subtract my 17 from both sides. And x squared is equal to 225 minus 17, 208. And then to get rid of that squared, remember we have to take the square root, okay? Remember I told you those x squares and those square roots cancel each other out. And x is equal to the square root of 208, okay? This is where we simplify those radicals. Remember where we did this in class, we'd simply take this number, 208, and start dividing it by these perfect squares. See which one goes into it evenly. Um, if I divide this by 4, it goes in 52 times. Seems a little easy. I'm going to keep going, just see if there's some other perfect squares that will divide into 208. Um, if I divide it by 9, it doesn't go evenly. 208 divided by 16, that does work, okay? Um, and 16, turns out 16 times 13 is 208. 13 is a prime number, and so it doesn't factor any further. So I know that x is equal to 
the square root of 16 times 13. Now, I can take the square root of 16. I know the square root of 16 is 4, so I'm going to take this square root, pull it out to the outside of my symbol. And x is equal to 4 square root of 13. All right. That's all of day 12. Happy mathing.